We now move to questions to the Education Minister and we first of all start with topical questions and I call Phil Flanagan. Mr Flanagan. The Minister will be aware of the ongoing challenges uh, facing St Mary's High School in Brala and its threatened closure. There is a, a public meeting taking place this Wednesday evening to further inform the local community about the alternative and innovative cross-border proposal that is being proposed by the local action group in the area. Can the Minister give me an assurance um, that his department will do everything possible to ensure that this alternative proposal is fully assessed by CCMS as part of its ongoing work? Uh, and firstly, can I congratulate the Finance Minister on his elevation to his new post? Myself and the previous Finance Minister got on like a house on fire, and I'm sure that relationship will continue, uh, with Mr Hamill. But in relation to the member's question, um, one of the issues which has arose as part of the area planning proposals has been the involvement of local communities in the discussing the future of their schools. And whether that be in rural communities or urban communities, I have urged all the relevant of managing authorities, whether it be education boards or CCMS, to take credence of what local communities are saying to them. And if alternative plans are coming forward, they need to be critiqued by the managing authorities to assess their value, perhaps their limitations as well, but they certainly deserve to be critiqued and, uh, and evaluated by the relevant managing authority, and that is the case in Brava as well. Phil Flanagan. I thank the Minister for his answer. One of the difficulties that, that groups um, face is that, that they are not really made up of, of educationalists or academic experts that can produce um, well written and, and very detailed reports. So, would, would, would the Minister's Department be willing to, to look at providing funding or, or staff resources to help groups like this one further develop what is a very exciting and innovative alternative proposal to closing a, a rural post primary school? Well, I think you missed the right minister to ask that question to. The finance minister has just left the room. There is no funding available within my department to finance uh, programmes of work such as the member sets out. And if a proposal is coming forward, it doesn't have to be as detailed as perhaps a consultant or someone else you wish to pay large sums of money to will produce. Local communities know their community. They will be able to have access to the information from their schools and indeed through freedom of information and other resources in relation to travel distances, etc., etc., around these reports. But the people you have to convince about the survival of a rural school is not the minister, it's not CCMS, it's the parents in the area. You have to convince the parents to send their children to the school. Because what happens time and time again is parents, for whatever decision or for whatever reason, decide to send their children past their local school onto another school. So start convincing the parents in the locality of the viability of the school, and then that's your bottle one. Sammy Douglas. Mr Douglas. Could I ask the, the Minister, could he give us an update on the review of secondary education in East Belfast and I suppose implications for South Belfast as well, Minister? I am uh, reaching the stage where I will be able to make a final decision in relation to the development proposals at East Belfast and affecting South Belfast as well. I had asked my officials to go and speak once again to the relevant boards around uh, a number of matters which had come to my attention as a result of the discussions I had with elected representatives and indeed the community representatives I have met uh, and the schools I have met throughout this thing. And as I said to Mr Flanagan, one of the issues which has arisen and positive issues from area planning that has arisen is that communities have started to take ownership of their schools. I have to decide has that ownership come in time to save the school. Thank you, Minister, for this question. And I know that the Minister had uh, met with all the MLS in East Belfast. Would it be possible to let us know, A, uh, when this process is going to finish, and B, that you would agree to meet with us again to give us an update? Uh, I can't give the member a definitive answer in terms of a date as to when I make my decision, but it is imminent. I will certainly um, accommodate any discussions with officials following my, de my, my decision. I am involved, still involved in a statutory consultation process. That has closed. I have to make, now make my decision now. But once my decision is made, I am more than happy to engage with elected representatives around that decision. Paul Gervin. Mr Gervin. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, to ask the Minister of Education, in light of the recent um, GTC NI um, survey of teachers in relation to the levels of progress, um, just when is this fiasco going to be brought to an end? Um, I read with interest the GTC's report into levels of progression, and indeed, I already had within my possession uh, consultation responses from schools 
in programmes of work which the Department of Education and SEA have taken out, and they reflect the feelings as expressed in the GTC report. But I, I don't accept we're in a mess. We're in a, pro a, pro a programme of change within our assessment, within education, within schools. I had committed to the unions and indeed to the Education Committee, which, by the way, also agreed to the levels of progression uh, proceeding. Um, so it was not only the Minister who was not hearing, not seeing and not listening uh, at that stage, as was pointed out to me this morning. They agreed that the, the changes I had made at that stage were suffice to allow it to go into a trial year. I assured the unions that during that trial year I would re-evaluate, I would meet with and discuss and learn from whatever had to be done in regards to this. I have done that. Uh, the GTC report confirms many of the things I had already found out. I am going to go back to the unions and I am going to put proposals on the table on the way forward. I believe there is, an, there is a requirement for assessment within our system, but I do accept that that assessment has to be worthwhile and it has to add value to education. Paul Gerwin. Thank the Minister for his answer. Um, just in relation to uh, the answer, can he indicate a time frame then in uh, making those changes? Because obviously the report bears it out, everything else is saying it. We've known it for quite some time. Uh, how, what is the time frame for making that change? Um, it will be within a matter of weeks, uh, possibly stretching into months, but not a significant period of time after that, because the, the, the schools need to know what changes I am making. And um, hindsight is a great benefit to members who, during question time and opposition, uh, position when, which, which they can adopt, and I have no difficulty with that. But this was debated at length through the, the Education Committee. The Education Committee quite rightly asked for changes to it, and I delivered those changes, but no one blocked it. Everyone was prepared to give it the chance over the year because it was being evaluated by me, by my department. We have evaluated it. I did not need the GTC report to tell me the findings they told me. I already had that information in my possession because I went out and I saw that I will be delivering changes to the programme, but I do believe that assessment is a necessary part of improving our education system. I do also agree that we have to get it right. Mickey Brady, Mr Brady. Gorham, I got uh, Ken Corley. Could I ask the Minister if he's given any consideration to breaking party with the UK in relation to the public sector pensions bill and perhaps establishing a local pension scheme for local teachers? Um, the Department of Education is committed to whatever the decisions the executive make and in terms of the assembly makes around public sector pensions. Uh, there is a bill moving its way through the Assembly structures, and I await the outcome of the Assembly in regards to that. However, in relation to teachers' pensions, during an earlier phase of this, when changes were made by the Westminster Government, I did produce alternatives to what Westminster was suggesting. I published those for consultation. I engaged with the trade unions, and it would have seen those teachers on higher earnings, yes, paying a, a, a greater amount than those on low earnings. And I thought that was a fair way forward, given the, the financial consequences uh, we were facing as a direct result of economic decisions made elsewhere than here. The unions rejected that. Um, so therefore, I, I could not move ahead with it. I await the outcomes of the pensions bill, and we will see what policies that bring forward. Maggie Brady. Thank you, Minister. For his answer, and could I ask the Minister if he had any more recent meetings with stakeholders, uh, teachers, unions? And if so, could he give us an update on that? Um, I, I regularly meet with uh, unions and stakeholders across the education family. Uh, we have discussed many issues, including pensions. I have authorised my officials to engage with the, uh, the unions in relation to pensions as well. So it is an ongoing discussion, but we are continually hampered on the way forward by decisions taken elsewhere. Our economic policy is not driven by this assembly. It is driven by Westminster for the needs uh, of uh, England, largely, I have to say, in terms of its economic policy. So I would like to see, I do not believe we resolve the economic crisis we're in by attacking pe people's pensions. I do not believe that is the way forward. However, the economic constraints placed on us by the Westminster Government will have consequences if we do not do something. Jonathan Craig. Mr. Craig. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In light of the Lord Justice Cogan overturning the High Court ruling over direct teaching support, what impact will this have on both policy and delivery of a special educational needs strategy? Well, we will have to study uh, the findings of the court, and, and the court found in favour of the Education Board, which is delivering educational policy as directed by the department. So the, the judge found 
that the policy in place was um, right and proper for the delivery of teaching needs to that child. But let, let's study the report, or let's study the, the judgment. And if there is improvements to be made or lessons to be learned from that, the department will do so. Thank you, Minister, for that answer. Will, will the Minister concur that there is an urgency in actually getting a special needs strategy out there because it has raised concerns with parents of children with special educational needs that there's an uncertainty to their legal protection that they have at present and they want that either sorted out, dealt with, but more importantly, that legal protection kept for the children. Um, I accept that there has been widespread concern among parents in relation to the special educational needs review and it has been debated at length both within the chamber and at the committee and I have to say I found those engagements positive and beneficial to moving the, the, the legislation forward. I hope to have draft legislation with the executive by December and I'm acutely conscious that the only way we will convince parents of the merits of the changes is when they see the legislation and they are able to work their way through them. And I, and I work with the Assembly uh, in relation to that legislation to ensure the outcome is that it's something we can all agree to. Declan McAleer. Mr McAleer. Uh, thank you, Girl Margaret. Uh, could the Minister pro uh, provide us with an update on the Sure Start review and when it is likely to be published? Um, I have signed off on the papers which will commission a review of Sure Start within the Department. So the review has yet to kick off, but I would like to see it kick off within a short period of time. We are spending somewhere in the region of £25 million per annum in relation to Sure Start, and while there is anecdotal evidence of its benefits to children, families and local communities, I, I think it is only right and prudent that given the time that it has been in place that we review it, how it is delivered on the ground, what the actual benefits are and what we should be doing in relation to Sure Start. Uh, in, the, in the 21st century. So th there's a programme of work yet to be taken on board, uh, and I think it will be very beneficial. Uh, and when we find we have the report, the reviews published, then we'll be able to map a way forward for the quite significant amount of money we invest on it. Uh, could the Minister outline the role of Sure Start and how it's, its effective in tackling poverty in rural areas? Um, over this last number of years, we have expanded Sure Start in the, from the 20 most deprived wards into the 25 most deprived wards, and clearly a significant number of those wards will be in rural communities. I have been engaged in discussions with uh, the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development uh, at official level um, in regards as to how we or should we um, specifically target a number of rural wards in terms of providing further Sure Start initiatives to ensure that. This, the, the issues which affect rural communities in relation particularly around childcare, etc., is there any way the Department of Education can work with DARD uh, in relation to that? And those discussions will continue. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, uh, in terms of Loretto School, what changed their mind, given they were lock, locked in a legal battle in relation to the Lisnelli site, what changed their mind to move on to the Lisnelli site? Um, well, th that's really a question you'll have to put to the Board of Governors of Loretto. The legal issues had uh, come to an end, or the legal hearings had come to an end quite a while ago. Um, area planning moved on. My investment strategy, I, I made clear that the only show in town uh, in relation to area planning was going to be the Lissanelli site. The shared education debate moved forward, and I think, and I would hope that it was a case of that everyone within the Omri area wanted to play their part in ensuring that the shared education and the potential of the Lisson Alley site uh, was fulfilled. Trevor Clark. Uh, Further that, uh, Minister, then, can you give the House any assurance that your department wasn't in any conversation in relation? Uh, is this some way to encourage them to move away from academic selection? Uh, no, I do encourage them to move away from academic selection, but that was not part of the discussions or, I believe, their decision to move on to the Lisson Alley site. Dahi Mackay. Girl, I, get a, I can't clear. I can't remember. The uh, Regional Development Minister indicated last week that he wanted to be a, a revolutionary uh, in cycling. Uh, can I ask the Minister uh, if he wishes to join that revolution, uh, and will he look at the promotion uh, and facilitation uh, of cycling in places like Denmark, uh, in places like Holland, uh, and what lessons we can learn here from that? Um, uh, well, firstly, can I congratulate the member, since that's what we're doing today, on getting engaged? Yes. I understand it was a very romantic moment. You put the rest of us to shame, or at least my wife told me you, you put me to shame. But so congratulations on that. In relation to the revolution, I think it's a great idea. Uh, in terms of, in general, I think it's a in specific issue of cycling, um, I think it's, it's a quite good idea that the, the, the DRD minister has come forward with. 
I also understand that the members recently taken up the sport of cycling, or in other words, holding up motorists along the road. <laughs> so it is. But uh, I think that you know we are. In, all departments have a duty to encourage a healthy lifestyles, healthy living, etc. DRD minister has brought forward a proposal. I, there's potentially significant capital investment from my department, which money I don't have at this moment in time. But mm -hmm. I have asked my officials to engage with DRD officials further on the matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Topical questions. We now move on to order.